G'day there guys, it's Philip Wong here. Now, I re-listened to my own lecture today and I decided, you know what, I could probably have done better when it comes to explaining uh, lecture exercise part B, which was the business activity statement. Now, I guess there's a few life lessons to be uh, learned here, and namely that is, if you're going to give a lecture, it might help if you have enough sleep in you and maybe eat some lunch. Well, I've had some lunch now and I'm feeling a lot better. So let's go through lecture exercise B. Now, the important thing is that you will probably need to print this exercise because we're gonna come back to this information and I don't wanna like zoom in and zoom out because it'll get a bit confusing as you're watching this video. And second of all, why well, if you're gonna print it out, why don't you work along with me? Okay, so let's get started. Now, one thing is that I'm going to remind you is that I'm not actually going to examine GST free supplies and input tax supplies. Basically, uh, we'll leave that for tax law if and when you go and study tax law later in your degree. Hopefully you're doing an accounting degree, so you'll, you'll do that. But, uh, you know, for the majority of our commerce students, that's not really important. There's only two things that you need to know, and that is some transactions will have GST, so GST applies, yes, or it will not apply. And that's basically as much as I possibly need you to know in first year. Let's have a look. We have some total sales here, and uh, all of these numbers are going to include uh, GST, so we'll keep it nice and simple. Total sales of $110,000. We've got some exports here of $5,500, GST free supplies, uh, sales of $5,500. Now, the one thing which possibly isn't super clear in uh, this question here, but that's okay, the question here is really just trying to give us an example uh, of how to fill in a bass because it's a very useful skill in the real world. These numbers here are part of this total sales here. So we'll have sales that are local, some that are exports, some that are GST free, and some that are GST-able. Our total sales, including the GST, was $110,000. Okay, cool. Now, on the purchaser side, some things we will have purchased as assets, such as we bought a machine here for $33,000, and there'll be other things which we purchase and have GST on it. So, of those expenses, we're just gonna assume that literally everything else here, the $44,000 here, uh, does have GST on it. Uh, so basically anything that we bought uh, will have GST. There'll be no GST free purchases. Okay, cool. Now, if we uh, zoom out here, all right, you will see that we have four sheets. Now, the government used to give you paper business activity statements, and um, they used to be pink in color, kind of just like you see here, actually. I've, I've in fact, mended this just so that there are no uh, privacy issues. And um, they also used to give you a white sheet of paper that, for the most part, people just threw in the bin. And it's a really helpful learning tool. Uh, it wasn't something that you had to lodge. In fact, they very clearly say, you know, do not lodge this with your, uh, with your business activity statement because, well, we don't really need this. It's just a case of when you figure out these numbers, eventually you'll get to this final number here. And this final number here is the one that really matters and it goes into the business activity statement. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's just quickly uh, delete all of the stuff. Uh, cool. so we're going to go ahead and fill out this GST calculation sheet as a learning tool. And then once we know that, we can then go and put those correct numbers into the business activity statement. Now, the government doesn't actually need all of the numbers that you have here on the white sheet because basically, once it's got the information here on the business activity statement, the other numbers are implied. So, you know, one thing minus the other thing, ah, I know the answer already. So when people fill out this business activity statement, they find it a little bit confusing because, well, you know, why is the government asking half the information? Well, one, they can figure out the other half. And um, the other part is that the business activity statement is got, well, it does many things and it's not just uh, GST. You will see on the front of the business activity statement that it deals with GST. And indeed, this part here, this is uh, the 
primary reason why we have business activity statements in the first place. Let's go for a yellow highlighter, which is probably a bit more of a traditional color. You'll notice that with GST, there are actually three options here, one, two, and three. And uh, option one is really the most common one, and that is to calculate and report your GST quarterly. If you're a very, very small operator, you can get away with it annually. Uh, and then there is also the option to do so as an instalment uh, uh, quarterly. However, um, these two options are something which the government will uh, basically allow you based on your trading circumstances. They're not as common as option one, and so option one is all I'm going to put on the exam if I ask this particular part of the BAS. Um, we've always had BAS on the examination for almost two years running now, so you can be certain that there'll be some part of the BAS here, um, but if I've crossed it out here in the video, then you won't get it on the exam. Seems pretty simple. All right, let's get started. So first thing is we're going to do the sales. This part here is going to tell us how much GST we owe the government. This will be a liability. The other part here is GST paid. In other words, when we bought stuff and paid for it, uh, we will have an asset called GST paid. Yep, great. So let's fill it out. Total sales, 110. Exports and GST free sales were both 5500. So pretty easy. We'll go here. First thing we need to do is uh, write ourselves a little note. Uh, I will actually maybe just make that a little bit easier to read by making it slightly larger. There we go. And uh, remember, for the most part, most businesses work in quarters. Uh, there will be, uh, what's it here? Uh, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. The quarters are usually named after the final month in that quarter. So the financial year in Australia starts on the 1st of July. And so when you file your BAS here, we usually talk about the September quarter or the December quarter or the March quarter or the July quarter, you, you, sorry, June quarter. You get the drift, right? Now, um, because this is trimester uh, three, and we're currently in December, I'm gonna make that the December quarter, why not? Tax period is December quarter, QTR for quarter, comma, 2018. I'll put my name up here so I know who did the work. Cool. And then we have to go ahead and fill out all of these numbers here. And so when we've got our answers, we can stick it on the bass. First thing is, uh, what was the total sales? And uh, I told you that as part of the question, 110,000. Export sales was 5,500, 5, 5, put a comma in there. Uh, there were no input tax sales, uh, so we'll just put a dash. And if I sum all of this up, I will get $11,000. Pretty simple, yeah? Cool. Then any sales which were subject to, uh, sorry, total sales that were subject to GST uh, would be $99,000. So where's my pen? $99,000 thousand dollars any adjustments this would be any uh, purchase returns sales returns or you know in anything weird that's happened uh, maybe the government owes you some money or there was a mistake somewhere along the line uh, we don't have that so we just put zero so we have plus this um, uh, plus or minus this if there are any and that's zero so nine nine zero 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 and then the final number here is GST on sales, and then you divide that number by 11. Now, 99000, ah, pretty much know straight away that that is $9,000. Okay, great. So 
let's go ahead and put all of these numbers here straight on the bass so that we've got them done. Go to G1 on the bass. Uh, $110,000, okay. So we scroll down to here where we've got option one, calculate the GST and report it quarterly. I'm going to tick that. I go uh, one, oops, $110,000. Now it says here, does this amount include GST? Well, yeah, it's, it's essentially in the question uh, all the way back here. I've just said, yes, it, it does include GST. So here we go. Yes, it does. Export sales, 5,500. Other GST free sales, 5,500. Capital purchases. Now, uh, I actually haven't done that just yet. So I will leave that because capital purchases are just here. We'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, okay, so that's G1, G2, G3. And this last number here is 1A on the summary section of the bass. Okay, so let's go find that. The summary section is down here. And I will put a rule across here. I'll do, actually, I'll just highlight in yellow. All of this section here is the summary section of the bass. And usually, if we're going to put anything on the exam, usually it's going to be the summary section. Uh, the summary section there is essentially uh, the total of what you owe the government and then the amount that the government owes you. I'm just going to make a uh, random comment as, you know, somebody who's been in accounting for a long time. It always really frustrated me that the government put the amount that the ATO, uh, that, that we owe the ATO on the left hand side because to me, this is a liability. And the amount that they owe us is an asset. And uh, I can't think of assets being on the right hand side because they're normally, well, in fact, they are debits and liabilities are credits. But uh, I don't design these government forms. Okay, brand over, back to it. The total amount that uh, we owe the government was $9,000 of GST. That is label 1A, and we found that number way back here. Cool, happy days. Now let's go ahead and complete GST amounts that the tax office owes you from things that we have purchased. So capital purchases, Capital purchases here essentially are long-term assets, and we're specifically talking about that machine that we purchased. So that would be $33,000, and any non-capital purchases would just be regular expenses that you have. Uh, and we found that that was $44,000. Of the $44,000, some of it was just the boss's lunch. It was private expenses, had nothing to do with the business. Um, but for whatever reason, perhaps the boss just grabbed the checkbook and um, it's basically just a drawing. So that was $44,000. If you add those two together, you're going to get $77,000. Yep. Purchases for making ink, uh, input taxed sales. Well, I remember saying that I would not test that in this particular course, so I'm not going to worry about that, zero. Purchases that did not have GST in the price. So perhaps I purchased milk and coffee because um, basic coffee, basic milk is GST free, but uh, we don't have any of those, uh, at least it's not in the question. And then it says, estimate the purchases for private use or not income tax deductible. Now, lunch is unfortunately not tax deductible, but the boss spent $110 one afternoon on lunch anyway. So we're going to have in total for all of these numbers here, 110, delete that. So then we need to go plus G12, plus G16. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I am wrong, I take that back. We need to go plus G12 minus G16. 
my bad. Uh, and that will get you a number 76890. Now I will point out here that what I'm trying to do as an examiner is give you some very easy numbers and some mm, more challenging numbers here. You will see that $99,000 is a very easy number to figure out for GST. You instantly know that if the number was 99, it must be $9 of GST. So pretty much everybody in the class will get this particular one right. But by giving you what looks like round numbers here and here, you're going to end up with slightly skewy numbers below. Now, one of the tricky things that I might do is I might give you a seemingly easy number. For example, I may give you a number that is, instead of 99, uh, I will give you a number like, uh, let's just rub this out, and I'll put a false number here. Let's say I give you a seemingly easy number here, right? So let's make this, just for argument's sake, $100,000. Now. I would gambit that maybe about yeah, half the class would see this 100 and automatically think, oh, I know 10% of that, that's just $10,000, piece of cake. However, you need to remind yourself as to whether you're going to you know, the price plus GST or you're taking the total value and you're trying to find that value. Now here, it even says here, take G, yeah? and divide by 11, not multiply by uh, 0.1. So the answer is not $10,000. In fact, the answer, if we go here, $100,000 divide by 11, ah, look at that. It's $9,090. So I need to put 9000 and $90. It is not $10,000, all right? You need to be very, very, very uh, clear on why that is. Now, we'll get back to what I was saying here about these numbers. So I've given you what looks like uh, some easy numbers to start off with, 77 and 110. And of course, when you go one minus the other, you get this more uh, not so pleasant uh, 7, 6, 800. Uh, yeah, eight ninety dollars. Sorry, I should say. Let's just clean that up. I've made a bit of a mess of it. Eight hundred and ninety. Now there are no adjustments, just like there were before, and so that means that the total purchases uh, that are subject to GST after any adjustments is seven six eight nine zero. Again, don't worry about cents. And the total value there seven six eight nine zero. Just quickly pop that into the calculator. Seven six 890 divided by 11, 6,990. 6,990. And then we're going to take those numbers, we're going to put the 33 into G10 on the bass, and we take the 44, put that into G11, and take this last number and put that into 1B. So we'll do the first part up here, that is G10, capital purchases, that was uh, 33000, it's not my best three, and uh, non-capital purchases was 4400, zero, zero, zero. there we go. Yeah, all right, cool. So I'll just tick those off because I've done them. Tick, tick. Now this last number here, that has to go into the bass summary section. And the amount that the ATO owes you, so in other words, this is our assets, on our, for, for us that is, um, those assets was going to be 6990 if I remember correctly, 6990. There's nothing to worry about here. And so we just go 1B plus 5B, yeah. So this number plus zero is equal to 6990. So we've done that. 
Uh, all right. What about this side here, where it talks about PAYG withhold, uh, withheld and PAYG in, on the income tax installment and deferred company fund and blah, blah, blah. Right, so that's all this other stuff up the top here. Now, uh, pay as you go tax withholding is not currently in MAA uh, 103. So I'm just gonna write here, cross that off and don't worry, not in this subject. Yep. And uh, oftentimes you'll have to do a PAYG tax instalment. Again, none of this is going to be in this subject. So don't worry about any of that. We're just here to worry about the business activity as it relates to GST. And the GST part, as I've mentioned before, is all the way up here. And it's really just this that we have to worry about. Okay. So zero dollars from uh, PAYG, zero dollars from uh, company funds and anything else like that, which means that if we just go plus, 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 we're going to end up with $9,000. Pretty simple, yeah? Okay. Uh, so I then have $9,000 which I owe and 699 which they owe me and that means I'm going to pay them because I owe them more money than they owe me. So uh, down the bottom here, this is a very easy part to, to miss. We, we usually put, like I mentioned before, the summary in this very last part here on the examination and there is a point on the examination for being able to say, well, is the number here bigger or smaller than the number here? So in this case, the ATO will want to know, are they sending you money or are you sending them money? In this case, uh, yes, 8A is indeed bigger than 8B. So we're going to tick yes. Yep. This is the amount payable that we owe to the government. Uh, now, if we go one number minus the other number, you'll end up with $2,010. This form took us about, I don't know, say um, uh, 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, not quite sure. Um, sign it little signature there. Uh, the date, which can be, uh, I don't know, make it Christmas Day, 25th of uh, December 2018, because I just love doing tax on Christmas Day. And we are now finished our bass. So yeah, um, I went through this a lot slower this time. Um, I'm sorry I rushed it a little bit in the uh, main lecture, but I hope that you now see how we go to fill out our BAS, particularly when it comes to the GST component of the BAS. Um, the one thing that we really want you to be able to take away from this is the fact that uh, uh, how GST is charged uh, so in other words, GST is collected whenever we sell anything that has GST on it, of course, and um, the government owes us a credit whenever we buy anything that has GST on it. And at the end of the uh, period, you're going to net off these two numbers. Uh, let's just be a different color, make it really obvious. You're going to net off this amount versus this amount. One minus the other is going to be the answer down the bottom there. If it's a case of they owe us more than we owe them, then you need to have a tick down here because the government will refund you. Yes, the government totally, totally, totally does refund money if you have paid too much. Um, but of course, in this case, as it is with most businesses, you hope generally that the sales are going to be bigger than your expenses. So you know, most businesses will have a greater than sign. And so they're going to pay ATO uh, some net of value in GST. All right, guys, thank you very much. I hope that uh, was a little bit more in depth and a whole lot more clear.